Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone had an awesome week. We've made it through another one. Um, I'm Katie Harwood. I'm the manager of events at the Chamber and Overseas in Tallahassee. Welcome to First Cup. Um, we are very excited to have Bernie tomorrow with us this morning. Um, but first, just a couple of housekeeping things. Everyone coming in on mute, just go ahead and stay that way while we get started. Um, I have a few questions you've all been on these before you know the drill to kick us off. Um, but if you have questions, please by all means, um, put it in the chat box in this chat box over here. If you want to ask it in person, which we definitely encourage, go ahead and raise your virtual hand um, by clicking participants at the bottom tab and you can raise your virtual hand and go in and unmute you. Um, that should be that for housekeeping. Um, True Leave is our sponsor this morning, and they are hard at work and unable to join us this morning. But just a reminder from Skylar that they are hiring for any and all people. So if you or someone you know is interested, you can go to trueleave.com slash careers, or you can email Skylar directly if you think you have the candidate for them. Um, she's super excited and looking for the talent. So um, if you need her email address, shoot me an email or a private message me through the chat box and I can chat to you. Um, without further ado, Lynn, welcome. <laughs> Do you want to go ahead and introduce okay. for people who may not know you? Sure. Um, yes. Yeah, so I'm the Vice President of Development for um, our Florida partnership with North American Properties. And um, I've been in Tallahassee for about three years. Um, working on our Cascades Park project here. Um, I grew up in High Springs, a little town north of Gainesville, and um, actually worked for North American Properties about 15 years ago um, in Fort Myers at our other office there. Um, and so moving to Tallahassee, I graduated from uh, UF with a degree in economics and um, got my construction license a few years later. Um, my parents were custom home builders, so I've always had um, development and construction in my, my life. And um, so I came back to work specifically for um, this project and have since, uh, we, we work around the state, so I'm involved in some other projects as well. But um, this has been uh, really a project that's been in the making for probably five years now. <laughs> So it takes more um, than you might imagine to get a project like this entitled. Um, and so, you know, we basically got started on this, um, like the retaining wall was last, so February of 19, we started um, with the construction. And so I do have some recent aerials I can show you guys just to compare later on, but um, we, we've been, um, just going strong so far here um, through all of the COVID and, and everything. So, but yes, just to answer your question, <laughs> that is um, kind of my background and why I'm here in Tallahassee. So you look like you're in the office. Have you been able to work remotely at all or have you all been hanging out there? <laughs> well, we have about 15 full-time employees that, um, basically half of them are working remotely. Mm -hmm. I um, haven't missed a day in the office since this all began. Um, there, there are three of us that basically use the, the top floor of our office is about 2,600 square feet. So we are very well separated. And then downstairs we have a couple um, offices for our superintendents, but they're mostly out in the field. So um, we, you know, we're social distancing for sure. Um, and yeah, all these, we've had tons of Zoom meetings or we actually use Teams, but um, you know, we'll be down the hall and just be having a meeting <laughs> together. Um, so that's strange, but it's, it's been great and adapted. And how's the project going? I drove by it recently. Is this a kind of just popped up overnight? <laughs> um, and, and I know from other conversations that we've had with you, how it kind of all gets pieced together from another location. Yeah, and yeah. So why it pops up overnight. <laughs> so we have we have several different construction types going on on our site right now, but the main one is precast. So you've seen a lot of precast parking garages probably, but the hotel, the, the Marriott AC that we have is fully, um, the structure is fully complete. 
And we just recently, last Friday, topped out on our north-south north, um, section of our multifamily building. And the precast construction, they're basically panels that are made in Bartow, Florida. And um, they bring them up on a trailer and lift them right off the trailer and put them on the building and weld it together. And so it's almost like Legos, it's, but it goes so fast. So they just have, I mean, the, the type of coordination on the front end to get this um, to all come together really well is immense, but um, it does go fast. We erected the hotel in 45 working days. Wow. And that's pretty amazing. And our um, garage, we just started on, so <laughs> it's kind of hard unless I have a site plan up, but the way that um, we are staging this is the north-south side of the multifamily building has been erected. And then we are building the parking garage that is tucked into the 40 foot retaining wall. Um, so you really won't see the garage from Calhoun or Gaines. Um, that is expected to, to be erected in um, 30 days. So it's, wow. yeah, it's pretty impressive. So yeah, if you haven't been by the park lately, um, you should drive by because it's probably a lot different than what you remember, so. It's exciting. I was running and there was like construction going and like sparks <laughs> flying. I didn't oh, yeah. feel like I was in Tallahassee yeah. anymore. It was very cool. Yes, a lot of welding happening. The, um, the panels themselves are between 30 and 40,000 pounds. They're huge. And um, they have basically there's steel embeds where it's all welded together. And you basically pour topping slabs, concrete in on each floor as you go. And um, that, so it's, it's very, um, very good, very, I would say um, an e efficient type of construction as long as you have coordinated everything well in advance because we're learning a lot on this project. We've built a lot of parking garages this way, but um, multifamily units um, are a whole different animal, but it's really cool. I can, I don't know if you can see behind me, the hotel is there. And then oh, yeah. uh, you're actually looking into uh, a unit in the apartment, which that's the balcony. You can see the big overhang there. Um, so, and they're already metal framing on a couple floors. So we've gotten the interiors going. Um, we've just, we've really been able to be productive. In fact, you know, a lot of projects are either, you know, going full bore or they've stopped. And because, um, some have stopped. We've even seen an increase in the number of crews that are available to come on our site. So we're getting things done faster, which is, um, which is great because um, the faster, I mean, time's money. And we uh, still have our um, uh, countdown clocks hanging in the entryway of our office. So it's, um, you know, that's, those end dates haven't changed. That's so. fantastic. <laughs> I didn't even think about crews being, extra crews being available. Yeah. That's and, a silver lining. Okay. Yeah. It, it so, is. so what's left? You've got the hotels up. Uh huh. So the um, garage, both garages. So there's um, a four level parking garage that I uh, just mentioned that we just started on this week mm -hmm. on the uh, west block. And then on the east block, there is a two level parking garage that's underneath the public plaza that you won't see. Okay. Um, it's very difficult to describe this project because there's 40 feet of fall from the north. Uh, west corner to the southeast and so we use the topography to um, basically put put the development um, tuck it in and have different um, entrances to the parking garages so you don't have ramps like you see in like Plain Plaza um, so it's uh, it's been you know and even because I've stared at the site plan and these plans for years but just to see it it's um, you know really coming together and the the immensity of it, it's, um, I mean, just the balconies. If you guys come by and, you know, sit at the Edison, I've been there a few times this week since things have opened a little bit. And just to look, it really, um, you know, it frames the edge of the park and it looks great. I, I, <laughs> I agree, I agree. <laughs> um, Deontay is asking in the chat, we've already got some questions going, which is exciting. Oh, um, will okay. you speak to the partnership with Visit Tallahassee and Leon County and the amphitheater support space? Oh yeah, that's, yeah. Great question. So we've been, um, we, the city and county and CRA have purchased the amphitheater support space. If you'll remember before there was an old metal building 
that was, you know, kind of leaky. And that was what was used for when Axe came to town. Um, it was just not a great space at all. You know, this, um, an amphitheater like this, a park that's the, um, really the center of Tallahassee now is, um, was just being underserved. So this space, there is, Visit Tallahassee has a first floor space that will be um, the ticket office. And um, when the acts come to town, there's some space in the, the back that they'll have the audio video um, equipment and, and all that. But the third floor is, um, all, it's gonna open up onto the plaza. And if you'll see, if you come by the park, there's a balcony there that exists. That is also their space. So it's about a 10,000 square foot floor plate on the third floor, and that will have um, a 3,500 square foot um, additional performance space. It'll have green rooms, dressing rooms, you know, uh, and that they have their own private elevator. So, you know, um, the Avid brothers come back to town and they, they can basically come in our service area, go up to their, you know, basically not be um, seen until it's time for the show. And they, um, yeah, there's also a kitchen, a warming kitchen, and um, an additional space that you can just rent, like a boardroom if you want to have a, you know, a meeting. So that is um, going to be great because we're really lacking an additional performance space and uh, event space. The hotel also will have a 5,000 square foot ballroom. So, um, and we're working on the final designs for our plaza now, which will have two turf areas that will have. Uh, 40 by 80 tents that you can set up. So have big events, weddings, um, parties. So it's um, exciting. I love that being in events, I get really like nervous <laughs> about new events. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm very, very excited to have some, some new locations um, for when we can all meet in person again, safely. Yeah, yeah. Right. Each other. Um, are there, is there anything else that's kind of on tap that you can tease out to us? Has it, have anybody else been secured as <laughs> tenants? Believe it or not, we have had, because, you know, everyone's a little on pause right now. Yeah. The, as far as restaurants and retailers go, they're really concerned about their um, current locations and how they're going to, you know, come back from this, um, you know, stay at home and not, not be able to go out to their restaurants. So, that's, um, it's interesting, but we do have one that we hope to be able to announce um, very soon. We have, um, we're passing back letters of intent with um, one, basically they would serve ice cream, um, fudge cakes, that kind of thing on the park, which has also been one of the uses we want to put right there in front of the splash pad. So that's good. Um, we, before this hit, we were talking to some local restaurant groups pretty seriously, but as I said, they're, you know, They've got to reevaluate, and that's not surprising. Um, we have three other office tenants that we're um, trading LOIs with right now, and I hope to be able to announce them as well. But um, surprisingly, we're doing well on that front. We really thought that um, some of these conversations could kind of stop, but they've been continuing to go. People see the light at the end of the tunnel and that um, we are going to come out of this. Um, and so I think uh, it's, it's been surprisingly great, but I wish I could announce something. I've been wanting to announce something for years, but um, until people see it up and see it going, it's, um, you know, we, we really had a lot of interest pick up once the office building and the retail spaces were, were complete um, in, you know, beginning of this year. And so um, I do think by, you know, we're going to be able to announce some things very soon. So I will, I will keep you posted. <laughs> Perfect. Make sure we're the first to know. <laughs> of course. Being active means we're the first to know. Now, as far as office space, um, through all of this COVID-19, social distancing, um, we talked a little last week about the future of work and what that looks like. Um, are y'all pivoting at all? And there's some other people on the call. I see Slayton Vaughn and Daniel that might be able to chime in too on what people are going to be looking for as far as office space. Does that have your floor plans maybe adjusted? Well, has anybody talked I about thought, that? yeah, I was anticipating that we'd have maybe some redraws of some of the test fits that we've done, but currently the, the office tenants that we're working with want to keep the space the same way that it has been designed. They had, you know, there was still, there's still the ability for them to social distance with what they have. Now, granted, most of the offices now, or the, before this, were 
definitely um, leaning towards more having more collaborative spaces and working more in pods and things. But um, I do see that that that's going to likely change. And Daniel and uh, Slayton can probably uh, speak to that as well. What they're seeing and and talking with their clients. But um, but yeah, I'm surprisingly we haven't adjusted any of the test fits we're currently working on. Um, you know, I personally our office. It seems like, you know, we haven't missed a beat and we have, you know, 50% working from home. And so it's pretty impressive. You know, I don't know what, you know, the next months if we'll continue to allow those folks to, to work from home because it's, it's been actually more efficient. So, um, so I do see that that's probably something that all of, uh, all businesses and offices are going to have to reevaluate in the next few months. I agree. It's definitely not going to go back to a, it's definitely gonna be a new normal. We're not going right. back to normal anytime. No. Um, what kind of changes have been made on the sites for COVID-19? Just, you know, I've, I've heard of cool partnership with like social catering. And yeah, yeah. You've all been doing for your crews. So um, I just noticed when I looked it. So this um, is what you would um, see when you, uh, just an armband, like you would wear, if uh, you're getting admitted to a club. And um, every morning, everyone has to get their temperature taken. And so um, I'm not wearing a face mask right now, but every, um, everyone on our site has to wear some form of face covering. And um, so when this began, um, that was probably the most difficult thing to get started, to get people adapting to that uh, change because you know they start coming on site at 6.30 and to have them line up six feet apart and have their temperature taken and um, hand sanitized um, was something to get used to. But now it's like a well-oiled machine, really. And um, we did, uh, for the last six weeks, we um, provided catered lunches for everyone. And right now our census is about between 175 to 200 people a day working on site. So um, that was a you know something that we needed to do for morale and also just for safety. So you know, until now there weren't, weren't really many options for being able to go and get lunch. And so um, I think everybody really appreciated it. We did raffles daily with, um, at lunchtime as well for like Home Depot gift cards and Yeti cups and just to try and keep people, um, you know, happy and, and wanting to come to work every day because it was mentally challenging for everyone when this first hit, especially, you know, every, all the uncertainty and, a lot of their um, spouses or significant others could have lost their jobs. Uh, so just having um, that, we hope that that really helped. And, you know, we've spent, um, because we've also purchased a lot of masks, hand sanitizers, we set up um, four really great hand washing stations that, you know, um, people use a ton and we're, you know, glad to invest. I mean, we've spent over $50,000, I think, on our COVID. Um, <laughs> basic basically preparations and um, changes so the the other thing though like I want to remind or point out again is we've been so productive we actually I we we signed our draw I think draw 10 or something yesterday and it was for six million dollars and that's just on the GC side and that's kind of how we measure production is the amount of money that we're spending so if you work that out in April we spent about two hundred fifty thousand dollars a day and that means, I mean, we're peaking right now, but you know, before it was more <clears throat> in the lines of three and four million, but um, the, it just goes to show that we've been able to keep working. And, um, but I do think, you know, we're gonna continue with the temperature taking and uh, of course the face masks. And, and actually today, um, while I'm with you guys, we our managing partner of Florida, Sean McIntyre is here this week. He comes about every other week. And um, we actually are, they're having a team breakfast outside and we're gonna walk the job. And we've basically given um, all of our subs and vendors a long weekend just to go home for Mother's Day because we've been working on Saturdays um, throughout. And so we're just kind of taking a pause and we're walking the job together. And so I'm um, looking forward to doing that when we get off the call. But um, yeah, I mean, my biggest thing, I think, just has been, I've really basically put on eyeliner and mascara for the first time in six weeks. And <laughs> I haven't had my hair, it's usually either a low ponytail, a high ponytail or a bun. 
And um, because, you know, it's just, I mean, I know we're still doing these Zoom calls, but it um, it's kind of changed how, you know, fewer decisions in the morning too. I just wear which polo I'm gonna wear and, yeah. um, and grab a hair tie. So it's been, <laughs> I actually liked it a lot. <laughs> yeah, this only happens once a week. Wear sunscreen <laughs> usually and that's it. <laughs> I think those are all really awesome, and I think they translate well to all industries. The things that y'all been doing um, should really be followed by a lot of different companies as far as morale goes and safety measures. I mean, I think that y'all are hitting the nail on the head. Um, we've got a couple questions that came in from Sarah. What part of the project are you most excited about? Hmm. I think I'm most excited just about giving Tallahassians the, the option to have an urban downtown apartment that is on the park. I mean, when I'm standing in these balconies, I saw them on paper and I thought, oh, that's just an okay balcony. It's massive and it's very, all the units, um, we were they're mostly um, two bedrooms and one bedroom units. We do have a few three bedrooms, but, um, when you're standing there looking over the park or looking across at the hotel, it's just, it's very um, exciting. And I think people are gonna love to live there. It's also with this precast construction, we have more of this urban um, loft feel because there's a lot of exposed concrete that you'll have. And you know, the finishes will be um, very high end. And um, so I'm just excited for people to walk those units. I'm hoping, we were talking about schedule yesterday and we're still hoping to be able to have uh, people tour the units in like september october wow. so so at least have um start kind of pre-leasing we wouldn't really be finished until likely april of 21 but with with all of the with the complete project but um so that's exciting that's my i think people are going to really um, love it and you know there's 160 apartments uh, we're also building nine townhomes and the only those townhomes will be for sale the, the other the apartments will all be for rent um, so and we're working on um, modifying our site plan to include those townhomes so those should be coming at the same time basically April of next year um, so yeah it's that's probably just another option for people who want to live in more downtown walkable and have the, the uses that the park obviously, and then once we get restaurants um, and retail, a little bit of retail, not too much. We really don't have a lot of that. Um, and the office users and the hotel, people coming and staying in hotels again, all that energy, um, you'll, it's exciting, so. Now, is there not a lot of retail currently or there's not a lot in the place? Please. We just didn't really design for a lot because, you know, our apartment building is going to have an Amazon package room or lockers and, you know, everyone's, you know, the, it's the trend is, you know, less, um, it's more people ordering online, I mean, they're having their groceries delivered. It's, um, you know, the, the things that I see there, the, as far as retail goes, are more service type, um, you know, a spa or, or some sort of, um, you know, you know, hair small. It's just things that people want to have convenience, have the convenience of, but not necessarily a boutique selling. You know, so it's just yeah. kind of the way we've we're seeing things go, uh, at least to this point. Um, I was going to show actually a few photos if, if I can. Yes. Sue. Sue actually um, made made it by our site yesterday oh. and she had to go through the same protocol that we all do. Um, that is actually her getting her temperature taken and <laughs> I think you guys can see. Look at so her. yeah, so she um, was, she went through that with us. She was good sport. Let me see the other image I want to show. So this was um, April of 2019, um, this aerial. And so you can see um, we done demol demolition and, and site prep, but, and began our retaining wall. Um, but this is from last, from this April, just a couple weeks ago. And so you can see um, 
how much has changed in just a year. Um, oh, did I not share Should that? I do <laughs> Shoot, sorry, hold on one sec. Let's see. Okay. Sorry guys. This was 2019, April of 2019. Okay. And so yeah, you can see, like I said, site prep started the wall. Um, and then this was just a couple weeks ago. So wow. yeah. <laughs> so this is the, the restaurant retail space that I've been talking about. These, this is the amphitheater support space here. Visit Tallahassee office, four floors of office above that. This is the Marriott AC, uh, 154 rooms, and the, the ballroom as I mentioned. This is the north-south section of our apartments, so about 60 units there. And right now they're working behind there on the parking garage. So um, it's just uh, pretty, I just thought it was great to, to share what's been done in just a year. Love that. Thank you for sharing that. I see um, I see the Waterworks building, which has made me think of it. Is there, are there any updates on that? No, you know, this, um, we've been really focused on the production on the, the two blocks just south of it. And I guess I can bring that back up, that image, just to, if people don't know the Waterworks. Um, but we do see it, so this is the Waterworks. We also own this here. This is um, the big cistern you probably noticed. Um, these are historical buildings, so they will, um, we do plan to renovate, and we think it would be another a great additional event space. It's, it's not large, it's about 3,000 square feet, um, but we've done some preliminary plans for it, and so we do plan to circle back on that, but we've just been really focused uh, and, and really getting that open now during our construction, but we don't have the parking available. And yeah. so we're, we're going to um, definitely, it's going to be part of the development, but it's, um, we haven't really proceeded on applying for any permits or anything yet. But. Okay. While you still have that up, um, where will the town oh. <laughs> be located? Oh, well, let me... Um, and will you be offering virtual tours? There, I'm <laughs> Good point. I think that, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to um, do virtual tours now. I think that's a great idea. Well, it's hard to see here because the, the walk-up apart or townhomes are on gains. I'm actually, I'm going to pull up the, the old one. So I'm actually sitting here in this building. This was the former uh, Leon County Health Unit that we renovated and it's now our construction and development office. The townhomes are um, going to be built right to the west. So there'll be walk-ups and in a similar style of architecture, this art modern architecture that, um, you know, this was built in 1939. So last year when we renovated it, it's, we brought it back to life and, you know, it's 80 years old. Um, as you can, you probably could notice behind me, um, let's see, stop sharing. Okay. Um, okay, so um, the, uh, you can kind of see behind me the brick um, that we basically uncovered, it was covered in plaster. Um, the wood floors, <laughs> let me see if I can do this without, um, the hardwoods, they were covered in vinyl mastic, like vinyl floors, but it had the asbestos mastic glue gluing it down. So we um, also left a lot of the, a couple areas we left the ceiling trusses exposed. They were hand hewn. I mean, they have bark on them. They did not come out of a truss plant like we see today. So it was really cool to reveal some of those features. And, um, you know, we uh, also uncovered some tile in the bathroom, the little hexagonal tiles that were, um, you know, in the 30s. So that's been, um, this is the nicest construction office any of us have ever been able to work in. I mean, 
this it's been great and so we plan to either lease or sell this um, at least this is office space or sell it when we're done with the project but it'd be a great office and we've had some of our own consultants really interested in it like you know it'd be a great architect office or a, um, you know it's just PR for anybody it would it's just a really cool unique space so very cool um, this, I'm running out of questions, y'all. Do you guys have any questions? Put them in the chat box, raise your hand. Um, I'll ask this, what's your favorite thing you've seen in the community through all of this? I've been asking, I think everybody. Um, well, yeah, I, there's been a couple of great things. Our, um, I'm on the board of Big Brothers Big Sisters and they did an amazing job of coming together right after this happened and and um, finding ways to get uh, laptops to children. And so not only that help them with having remotes, they're having to work <laughs> remote school, um, virtual school, but also just to keep those mentorships going and keeping um, the, because we weren't able to meet with our littles in person. So having um, that ability and, and people in the community came together to help donate and, um, and get them into their hands and then yeah, also, you know, the, it's, it's really sad, but a lot of people are hungry right now and don't have food. And, you know, these children that are at home and not, not the adults as well, I've, I've seen that um, Second Harvest has done such an amazing job of getting food to those who need it. Um, but yeah, those two things have been really impressive um, and just happy to be a part and help and how I can. Um, but yeah, it's, um, you know, it's tough right now. And so just seeing everybody come together and serve the needs of the community, it's just been impressive. So good job, That's everyone. Wonderful. You're so busy. And so I love that you get to, you know, lend your time to other organizations. Thank you for doing yeah. that. Oh, yeah, no, this is um, what has been the most challenging thing for you personally? I mean, you've worked nonstop, but I feel like that might be a usual thing for you. I feel like I'm always working nonstop, but I mean, what's the biggest hurdle y'all have had to overcome? Well, personally, I guess I think it's been, um, pretty lonely on the weekends, which I shouldn't be complaining because I don't, I mean, I'm single, so I don't have little children that I'm with 24 seven or a husband that I, would um, you know want to probably kill right now so I think just being um, you know that now that we're able to get out a bit more that's gonna be great I um, was able to go visit my family last weekend which is was amazing and see my nieces and um, do some wood turning with my dad and that kind of thing but yeah it's it was pretty you know just very boring and lonely on the weekends <laughs> like nothing to do <laughs> Watch TikTok, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. And I don't really even consider myself like that outgoing of a person on the weekends, yet somehow I'm like feeling <laughs> by the whole thing when I'm really just doing the same thing I would normally yeah, would do. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's just a mentally. Yeah, it's exactly. Not. Yeah. <laughs> just because you can't. <laughs> but yeah, and I, you know, I think just trying to adapt to this, uh, the changes over the, you know, the first week here was pretty tough getting everyone to um, to understand the need for our, for what we were doing, the temperature taking, and like I said, now everybody now it's just the norm. So, <laughs> well, awesome! Thank you so much. Here's my my last call for questions. <laughs> going, going. We'll let you get to your staff breakfast and site tour. We won't keep you too long. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for having me, Katie. This was fun. Thank you for joining yes. us. That, this has been wonderful. We are so excited for the Cascades project. Um, yes. We're just pumped. Yes. Bye. Tallahassee. Um, well, me too. So you guys have a great day. All right. We'll see y'all next Friday morning. <laughs> have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.